Well, they can't see. They're listening. But it's like a his, sock, the yeah, sock hand. It's like a you know, sock puppet. Sock I know. Puppet. Yeah. But I would practice kitching on my hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did that with my pillow, is that which, which is in scared skinny. Yeah, that's so this practice. guy like Led Zeppelin, or did you put that out yourself? Or was, is, was that the music that was actually because I when I heard Cashmere and Led Zeppelin, I said, oh, wow, this is great. And, you, and <laughs> cookies, cookies and Cashmere. Is I got to tell you, I, I, this is really autobiographical right. I mean to a point and then you got to make it into a story you got to make it into you got to have that arc and everything but uh, honestly a lot of these things really happened like when he when he told me that he goes come on in you know I got cookies that really <laughs> happened and I was so naive I mean come I, on in, I got cookies yeah I mean I, my first kiss wasn't until I was 17 I was like this little naive chubby girl and he was like, come on in, I got cookies. And I thought, wow, cookies, because it was after school. I was hungry. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you come home from school. Ever since I was a kid, I'd come home from school. My mother would give me, like, a glass of milk and cookies, or she'd give me, like, some food, and I'd sit in front of the TV and watch soap operas with her. So I was like, okay, it's after school. I just walked him home, which is in the play. I don't know why I walked him home. I'm the, he's supposed to walk me home, but, you know, I was naive. I didn't know what I was doing. So he basically, uh, yeah, that part of the play could go, like, People are like, oh my God, this is the part where she gets molested. But no, it's not. Like it, it, it's it's sort of an intense scene there because I'm on the couch. You got Led Zeppelin playing, and I'm you know I'm taking it from beat to beat, moment to moment. And I bet there was a minute there or a second there where you thought, oh my God, this is going to go bad for Mary. And you know, so I had a feeling it was going to go nowhere. <laughs> so I said, I have a feeling she's going to want to get up and leave. I, was, I said, no, no. Oh, good. So not... you had faith in me as the character oh, yeah, I, I that knew... I would not allow him to do that to me. I knew you were going to stand up and go. Good. I, I knew, I good. knew that this wasn't going to happen. Good, because that's did... what I wanted. I don't want the audience at that point to be nervous for me. I want, the, I want it to be very light at that point. I knew right away that it wasn't going to happen. Good. I said, there's something that tells me. Uh uh-uh. uh, this is not, this is going to be a little dalliance and not even that, and that was going to be it. So I, I kind of caught that. Wow, uh, you're good. Oh, yes, yeah, so I kind of. The uh, scared skinny now, talking about cookies, I'm just getting out of a habit of eating chocolate chip cookies, and I eat oatmeal cookies occasionally because I guess they're healthy. Uh, like one o'clock in the morning, yeah, I'd be laying there watching got sugar TV. In them. Yeah, I'm laying in bed watching TV <laughs> right? and crunching cookies. Right, right. I've gotten out of the habit in the last couple of weeks, but it became such an addiction. I didn't think I could do without, but I'm doing fine without it. So uh-huh. that that's and a banana. I was a little surprised a banana can be that dangerous. <laughs> but I'm Are you talking on. about the top ten diet scene? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But cookies, I know. But even though the oatmeal cookies, it's. Not a good thing. Well, there really was a diet. When I when I do the top ten bad diets, like the top ten bad boyfriends, there really was a, there is a diet called the cabbage soup diet. And it when it when I first did it, it just came out and it was like this huge thing. It was like the cabbage soup diet, lose ten pounds in seven days, and you could eat all this fruit and all this these vegetables and everything you wanted, but you couldn't eat a banana. So. It was great. I mean, I lost 10 pounds, but then on day eight, I ate a banana, and I gained it all back. Wow. You know, we're sitting at McDonald's again. Uh, we're sitting, thank you. Thank you, Ronald. We're sitting at McDonald's here. Thank God there's, there's not, not a waiter would be in trouble right now. True. But this is the kind of food that it fills. It's cheap. Well, it's, it's not as cheap as it used to be. Right. You know, pound for pound and dollar for dollar, you're probably better off going to a better restaurant. Get a salad. Yeah, yeah. getting a salad. But, but this is, food is uh, it's economical. Again, not as much as it used to be. But it's filling, but it's it's dangerously filling. It dangerously yeah. filling. Yeah, yeah, there's no... I don't, I mean, so I don't think there's real meat in here. And it, may, and it makes it seem so kid-friendly. Yay, take your kids. Right, 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 that's right. What, I guess that's why they're trying to do away with the toys and all that. The that Happy Meal. Yeah, the Happy Meals and yeah, all that. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, I want to I want to kind of look over your bio right here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read it out to you. Mary's bio, Mary Domino is a bundle of hilarious contradictions with an angelic smile and a tough New York Italian ad, New York Italian attitude. She tells it like <laughs> It is a sweet faced couple with their energetic delivery makes Mary a favorite comedy club audiences. It won you a spot in the f- final event of the prestigious Ladies of Laughter competition at Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. This is an old bio. Well, you're, you're, <laughs> we can get caught up. Um, her, her, uh, her, okay, see, the internet. 
Her comedy act has been featured on Comedy Central, Stroud Attention Span, Theater Stand Up, Stand Up, and VH1. Uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts I see over oh, yeah. appearing in award-winning national commercials for Nicorette gum and Dunk. Explain yourself, Mary. Thank Nic- God. Nicorette. Thank God for Nicorette gum. I was Nicorette able to buy my house with Nicorette gum. gum. And Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' yeah, did, Donuts um, kind of flies in the face of your whole deal here. Well, you know, I'm an actress, so I get I get booked for national commercials, and I got uh, my first national commercial, the one that got me in the union. Back in, I don't know, was it 97? I think it was 97. Was Nicorette Gum. I was the spokesperson for Nicorette Gum. And um, really? the commercial ran really a long time, and I, they got good feedback on it. So they called me back, and they had me do another flavor. Uh, they didn't even audition anyone. They just called me back, and I did another flavor. I did orange. And then that ran really good. And a year after that, they called me back at the studio, and I looped in the mint flavor. So I did three national... <laughs> Uh, Nicorette commercials, and oh, thank God! I mean, I, I was able to like put a down payment on a house with that. Are you a smoker? Uh, I can't say. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. But, but I'm, I, I, uh, no, I am for all no, intents and purposes. In no the wonder f- it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but you know why? We, this is really true. This is very ironic. My father, this he was still alive at that point, but he was he was not doing well. He, he I think he just got diagnosed with cancer, and he. He was a smoker, and the doctor said, you know, really, please stop smoking, especially if you're going to get chemo and blah, blah, blah. So he was trying so hard to stop smoking, and I would leave little notes on the bathroom well, mirror for him, and I'd be like, yeah, Daddy, three days now without a cigarette, you go, you know, and I was always motivating him. And it was around that time that I booked this, and I thought, wow, because, you know, after my father passed and I was seeing those commercials running, I was like, wow, that is, that's really cool. Because I was so trying to help my father to stop smoking. And then ironically, I get a national commercial where I'm helping millions of people to stop smoking. I'm just listening to these children up here. I, I mean, this is about as unhealthy a place as you could be running around in food-wise. <laughs> so Nick Red Gum and you didn't smoke. Again, that's why it made so easy. Uh, but really, the, the, the <laughs> sure. Keep bringing that up. She didn't smoke. Okay. Maybe well, I should start smoking just well, for the hell of it. Well, you know the cash cab. You know this guy Ben Bailey. Oh, I know Ben. He's a he's a very funny comedian. But, uh, I love him. But he's not from New York. He's so Brooklyn. He's so New York. But he's actually from Los Angeles. And I'm sorry, Ben, but some of these folks know in advance they're going to be getting in the cab. Yeah. How do you know? How a do you friend know that? of mine okay. won two thousand dollars. Oh. But he kind of knew. Really? He and his friend knew that they were... Wow. Oh, sorry, Ben. You shouldn't be uh, saying this on <laughs> on radio. But there's another cash kid now in Chicago. She, yeah, a, yeah. A, woman, a woman driver. It's kind of kind of dull, but Ben Bailey is so good at it. Oh, yeah. And you, you always know when he goes, when they, they answer for the to double or nothing. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, hmm. You got it. That's yes, right. Yes. Gives you that thing. But uh, I, I love the way he's reacted. I know uh, probably ninety-eight percent of people, ninety-nine percent of people get get in the cab. No, wow. don't know. They don't know. Wait, they do know, but they don't know. But the one percent may know. Okay. But uh, you know, because let's the cab, let's be in the one percent. Yeah, because you, you know, let's go out and get a cab right now. Maybe we'll you know, see you, Ben. You know, you're stopping and, <laughs> and people hail your cab. You don't know who's going to get in there. True. You know, you have no idea. So I think probably one percent know. And I'm always surprised that on the mobile shot out right. that whoever it is is sitting right there picking up the phone right away. Mm. So I don't. I know always it. yeah, because like yeah, if I would call any friend right now, I'd pr- it'd probably either go to voicemail. Or they'd be like, Mary, I can't talk. Call you back in 10 minutes. I'd be like, oh, I need you now. <laughs> They're always there. Anyway, sorry, Ben, but he's he, the guys are right. But he's so New York. Yeah. And so New York, a Bronx, a Brooklyn. I'm, I'm yeah, surprised. He is. Okay, um, and talk about Dunkin' Donuts. Again, that flies to the face of what you do. Are you a yeah. Dunkin' Donut yeah. type? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they uh, the client booked me for the commercial. So that commercial ran for six years. It was, do you remember it? The, Not the remember? guy who got to make the donuts. That was something else. No, no, God. Yeah, yeah that no, was, that's when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah, that yeah. was a great running spot for that guy. No, this was where, um, uh, I, I'm on a train. It was actually the Long Island Railroad. It goes through a tunnel. I walk on the train with a box of donuts. Then my train goes through a tunnel, and the tunnel gets dark. Right. Then it comes out into the light, out of the tunnel, 
I look at my box of donuts and it's empty. And then in disbelief, I look at everybody all around me and everybody's powder? pretending they're, sh they're sleeping and I got sugar, um, powdered sugar on their face. I remember it. Do you remember? I that? Remember. Yeah, that was me. So you didn't get to eat any, did they give you donuts? Or did you get a little bonus donuts? Yeah, no. Way? Bonus donuts? No. In fact, when it was running, it was it was. You know, running. America runs on donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They have the best coffee, too. I mean, I'm... Ooh, the best. Ooh, Ooh yeah. the best. Sorry, Starbucks, but Dunkin' Donuts leaves you the dust. Leaves I you, tell you. Leaves you the powder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you, when that thing, when it was running, and it was running like, it was, it was wild spotting at one point, which means it just runs. Like, sometimes you see these commercials, it ends, and then it comes, like, right back on. It's like, it's over and over and over and over again. The commercials you always see are usually wild spot commercials. So it was wild spotting for a couple of years. So it was, it was on... I, I couldn't walk on the subway or walk down the street without someone saying, oh, my God, there's the Dunkin' Donuts commercial, the, the girl. So I would walk into a Dunkin' Donuts just as a goof, and I'd be like, uh, oh, hey, recognize me? And then I'd give a big smile. Can I, had, I have a donut? And they would be like, uh, no. <laughs> I had a Miss Subways on. Yeah, there used to be a, a Miss Subways, you know, a girl once a month or a woman once a month, yeah. all dressed up and an actress and all that. And what she's doing, it was called Miss Subways. And Ellen, who owned Ellen Stardust uh, Diner, Diner, yes. and a place it's on a Chambers place. Street, uh, she was a Miss Subways. And she would get on the train all the time and sit right under that Miss Subways so people oh. would spot her. That's I wanna, funny. I have to go back to Dick Red uh, for uh. one more word. What made them pick you? Did they ask you if you smoked? Did they? What was the? What was the? What sold them on you? Do you? Oh, I, I honestly don't know. I know that I went in for the audition, right? And they saw many people. Right. Um, and then they had callbacks. Right. I went to the callback, and they had many people at the callbacks. Right. I think um, a friend of mine is also a comedian. I think. I believe Vanessa Hollingshead was at that callback with me, and um, yeah, there were a lot of people in the callbacks. And you know, I just, I just walked in, I did the script, and I just was myself. And I don't, you know, you never know. It's kind of subjective. What does it? Yeah. yeah, you don't know if it's a certain look or a certain, if it's, it could be anything, you know. But they were looking for a, a certain sensibility that was real and uh, likable sort of down to earth maybe even like a little 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 new york but not too much because it was a national spot so i think i just had the right combination and i got very very lucky yeah you know you did a thing on public access a commercial sort of like a, a, a announcement for your act or your stand-up comedy you some sort of a spot you did and i know kimberly my daughter participate wherever you did it she participated in the spot and her oh, line was about, yeah. you know i was i was pretty dull before i met mary <laughs> that's funny <laughs> she i brighten up people's yeah, lives you people, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, again you're listening to visions a series of visits to almost everywhere i'm your host and fellow traveler herb malsman i am in town i'm home Living in Brooklyn, yay. and yay! Uh, With a three-legged cat, Three-legged cat, and a guy with, and another, uh, Kiki is the other cat. Kiki, Gizmo, Kiki. Gizmo, yay! Gizmo's the one with the three legs, oh. Kiki's the one that gets the medicine. Yay, I got medicine. that little hypo, you know, put it in his food. Uh, the third one's name is yes. Vegas, but he's at the vet. Vegas is ah. at the vet. So anyway, this is my hometown, born and raised in uh, Brooklyn. And we're here, and I'm calling this New York City Visions. I, and I'm going to say something right now, my tape recorder. What I do is, again, I think I mentioned it with, uh, a while ago, on uh, Gridlock Sam, my, my first piece here on April 4th. I'm using a Sony MP3 player, and I'm not sure. I, I, if I don't see something running in there, I don't know if it's actually recording. <laughs> so I always keep the tape recorder. I have that backup. Right. It just stopped. It just you stopped want me to flip it for no, you? No, no. It just no. stopped at about 46 minutes. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, flip it if you flip want. Flip it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I'm going like to do it's a little a pancake? Side. You just have to turn it. Open that up. Uh, yeah, open that up. There you go. There yeah. you do it. You, you open it up. Oh. And you flip it. Just I'm turn flipping. it around. Okay. And then and, and then hit just hit, the, and hit those two buttons, that and that. This and this together. Okay, and okay. we're just going to wait a second until it cooks it. Okay, okay, so just in case this soda yet, I couldn't ask Gridlock Sam to do that. He's way too, you know, he's part of that. He's, <laughs> a, he's a, he's a, he uh, wouldn't he's flip an executive. Your tape, I didn't ask him. him. I was in my pocket, my shirt pocket, so I couldn't get to it. Oh, and, um, you should have asked Gridlock Sam I to flip no, your no, tape. No, he's an executive. You're, 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 
was one of us. Oh, you know? great. I'm, I'm, I'm like low life. You're no, no, Mary, no, flip my no, tape. No, 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 you're not low life. <laughs> and get my look. She just looked at me when I said that. You're like, you're, get my slippers. Yeah, we're like together. We're, <laughs> I know, we're, I know. We're, I'm we're, kidding. We're together. So it's okay. I'm honored that I could actually, that you feel comfortable enough to let me flip there your you tape. There you go, Mary. I let Mary flip my tape. So in case the recorded as they work, I'll make sense of this and I'll kind of splice it around. The, oh, thank you, Mary, for flipping my tape. <laughs> this is so great. Because when the thing went off, it's gridlock Sam's office, I said, uh-oh, oh. what if this isn't working? We're stuck. And did it work? I'm it, sure it, it did, oh, right? Yeah, it was oh, Mary flipped my tape. Oh, I'm so... Thank God. <laughs> I bet I'm the only interviewee that ever that flipped, ever flipped tape. the tape. Is it true? It's did anyone true. ever offer to flip that tape? I've never had my tape wow. flipped by any guest. <laughs> You're the first person ever flipped my tape. Thank you. Right. Oh, Holy cow. I'm flip your lid pretty I've soon. I've been doing this since 1979. You're turning first, red. The first so time I've ever flipped my tape. I've never let a guest have their way with my, my picture before. Oh, <laughs> anyway, you see, sometimes we have to wait. You yeah, laugh so am hard. Am I red? Yeah, you're so, very red. red. Okay, so you flip my tape. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you, you folks are enjoying this. Uh, this this program is uh, is being produced uh, specifically for audiobookradio.net. Yay, audiobookradio.net. And they're they're based in the UK, but of course you hear them everywhere. They're online. And the, one, UK. the UK. Hi, the UK. Hi, Graham Norton. And and John Mayfield and all that. Graham. Oh, Graham Norton. That's right. Yeah, and John I, mean, I, I opened for him when he was uh, here in New York, and he did the Comedy Central. Uh, series. I was a studio warm up. Maybe he's I listening. love Graham. Guys, you know, it's audiobook radio uh, and John Mayfield. He's worked with Patricia Rutledge and and Vanell yeah. Scales and John Cleese right. and uh, some. I mean, some amazing company. I mean, nice. I mean, Richard Todd and some of John Cleese and some of the great voices. Uh, on April 4th, on April 4th, at, at that point, I was between Shakespeare, part uh, one and part two. So I, wow. I, love, I love being on audiobook radio. Wow. So this is where, where John uh, and John told me, get friendly with the machine, which uh-huh. I'm doing. But I told John, I said, I'm going to use my tape recorder as a backup. Right. But now we can go on forever. You flip my tape. So I <laughs> What we is, can do another hour. We can do another hour. Look at look at the way that woman just looked at you when you said <laughs> she was coming here to clean that that table. This is exactly why I want to go here. <laughs> I think they're like, I why are they sitting there with earbuds on I want and them. doing an interview, but they're not eating anything? I said to myself, if we're going to talk about fattening foods and what not to eat. Thank you. Sorry, but this is <laughs> so. Anyway, here. I, what would what would you? You know, let's 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 uh-huh. talk about you. What do you want to say? What would you like to talk about? Oh boy, I feel like I, I talked a lot already. Um, what do I want to say? Enough to flip I the wanna, tape. Well, I, think I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you first of all for coming to the show and seeing it, and, and then um, doing this interview. I mean, that's great. So I just want to give you a big, big thank you. Okay. And your daughter Kimberly, tell her hi. I remember, you know, when she went on stage for the first time. She didn't want me in the audience. I kind of watched I remember from, that. on the TV. I, I watched the TV screen. I, I watched her on TV. That that television. in the bar. In the bar. Because there was a TV in the bar I that was, was linked to the monitor. Yeah. Right. She didn't want you in the showroom. No, she didn't want me in the showroom. Because she thought that she would be too nervous yeah. with you. Little, did. you know, she didn't want jinx and all that. She wanted me step by side. But I did notice. But wait, the, was her act about you at all? Was there no. anything? No. Then why wouldn't she want you in the room? She was, I guess, you know, the the uh, the scrutinizing. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't seem that way at all. Oh, well, you know, you're not my kid. Yeah, well, that's my true. My kid sees me at a different kid, way Yeah, you. they see a whole different side of you. <laughs> well, uh, Mary, um, I guess, I guess, I guess, is that it? <laughs> Any other notes? <laughs> yeah, no. Any, anything you we want? we got to end it on a big finish. Go, go, do something. There you go. All right, uh, what can we say? All right, well, I guess to wrap up, so Scared Skinny... Um, is playing at Stage Left throughout um, March, April, and May of 2011. We'll fa- find out on May 9th if it wins um, the Mac Award for Outstanding Production. Uh, it debuted in the New York International Fringe Festival uh, August of 2010, and it won Best Solo Show Award. And uh, between then and today, it's been in the Astro Genius Festival and um, the Solo Arts Festival in New Jersey in Teaneck at the Becton Theater, the sixth annual Solo Festival. And it also played a theater source down in the village. 
So I've been I've been running it a lot. You know, it's it's been uh, about six months now, but it it's been having a, a good good run, and I'm really 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 proud of it. I feel like um, everything that I've I've done to this point, all my acting classes, all my improv classes, all my you know all my years doing stand up, I feel it all. And all my experiences, my life experiences and what I've learned is all culminating into this one story and this one production that I'm telling. And I just hope and pray that I could touch lives and I could inspire people. And that's why I wrote this. I want to inspire people. I want to show them that they're, they're not alone. I mean, if I could have lost the weight, then God knows, you know, anyone could. I was in such a bad, bad, dark spot. And that's why I, I, I put myself out there and my story out there, because I really want to touch people's lives and inspire. You know, it's a small theater stage left. It's actually a studio kind of thing. I think it's at Stage Left Studio. Mm -hmm. Again, 214, 214 West of 30th Street between... It's, you're, you're just about a block south of Madison Square Garden. Right, exactly. Uh, you're right there. Mm -hmm. uh, across from a church. So it's, and, and you hear the sounds from outside. You do, yeah. How, how does that affect... Do you feel at home, like you're speaking about being at home doing these things, and you've got? <laughs> well, it, it's a very. It's, yeah. First of all, it's only there are only a maximum of 45 seats, so it's an, a folks that's off off Broadway. Yes. A Broadway is a certain amount of seats. Off Broadway is a certain amount. Of, at the, I think over 99 or under yeah, 99, 99. seats. Under 99 seats. It, it's, it's classified, off, off. so it has nothing to do. With, it's not geographical. Mm -hmm. It's the amount of seating. Yeah, so this, exactly. And you're hearing, I'm hearing, and I'm, I'm watching you to see if you can be distracted by any of the sounds. There were sirens going up. I mean, you yeah, really no, I didn't get distracted. Well, you know what? It's a, it's a lot of rehearsal. You just got to put in a lot of rehearsal. You know, <laughs> you could do it inside out if you rehearse it enough. So I I hear I hear this, the sound like there was, um, I think the church bells rang the church, at a certain time. Yeah. Uh, your clock in there is two minutes slow. Right. I remember the when the church, but I mean, I hear it, and I, I'm drinking it all in it as the times. as the artist, but I'm not letting it affect the script in a way. Like I'm not going to drop what I'm saying and say, "Oh, there's church bells ringing." Like if it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, if I'm in a moment. But it's almost like being home because you're hearing these sounds in Stanton Island. Right. Because Stanton Island's got church bells. So it's almost like you're almost at home. It's yeah. very intimate. It is. It's a very intimate space. It's such a nice theater. And it only seats, yeah, it seats about 45, so it's considered off-off-Broadway. I would love to eventually put Scared Skinny off-Broadway. And I, I'll tell you what, yeah, it kind of move up. Yeah. You know, about probably 95% of the female audience was was not slender. Put it that way. Really? Yeah, I didn't yeah, notice yeah. that. Well, you I know, was looking I was looking at body types. Yeah, that's my demographic. I mean, definitely women, I think, between the ages of, like, you know, 18 and... Because this is all about body image and all that. 18 and, I don't know, 75. This is my demographic. It's interesting that they that they, they come there, this, 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 uh, this play, this play... Um, there are a couple of thin type women, uh -huh. but mostly they were heavy set. That's interesting. Mostly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, just some thoughts. Give us a give us your website. Remember, we're out of the eight. We have it today. Yay! Now, your, your website and anything else, any sort of contact. Great, I, I got great. I got two websites. The Ooh, plays. Big time. Yeah, we. <laughs> the plays website is www.scared-skinny.com. Someone already had Scared Skinny, who, but they're not using it, so I had to add the dash. So it's the scared, dash is dash under, the under... No, not the underscore, the, the dash, like a the hyphen. hyphen. Right. Okay, so and then Scared... Dash... Skinny. Scared hyphen the dash... Hi skinny. Right. I'm sorry, cut your No, no, that's okay. Give it again now. now. I'm confused. Is, is it a backslash? Is it a hyphen? Is it a colon? Is it a semicolon? What is it? I, it's one of those things that are the, the hyphen. Right. You know, like if you're married and you have... Uh, hyphen. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's uh, scared-skinny.com. Dot dot com. Right. And then uh, Mary Domino, comedian, actress, author. Well, we can say actor. I guess that's kind of like, well, okay, we'll go cook. Comedian, actress, author. Um, Thank you. Okay. So uh, Mary Domino. Dot com. M-A-R. You give it M-A-R-Y-D-I-M-I-N-O dot com. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and that's your website. You don't need the www. That's there true. I didn't even have to say that before. <laughs> the www. W-W. That's really you know, back I, in uh, 1982. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. 1998. I guess I I don't know if there's a, oh they, my, I meant off Broadway. You would think this would be brought by you. Can, well, I guess you said this is a dated. Bio. Yeah, this bio was old. Explain I've, the vagina monogogs. Uh, monogogs. Mon- monogogs. Now, the vagina like demigod. Folks like, like folks, folks like me, we've only kind of heard about it from a distance, but explain. Yeah, that. well, I mean, you I'm got you here. turned red when I flipped your tape, so I'm sure you don't so even I want to talk about a, a vagina, vagina monologue. <laughs> but explain, explain, explain. Uh, well, yeah, in that bio, I was in the vagina monologues years ago. Monologues. Uh, monologues. 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 Okay. Shakalaka, and um, but since then I've been in uh, Tony and Tina's wedding, right, off Broadway, and um, yeah, yeah, that's an you're old, yeah, that's an old what? You're pretty, you're pretty diverse. Yeah, thank you're God, I, I do a lot of acting too, and and stand up. Right. Okay, Staten Island. Okay, Staten Island. Staten, Staten Island. Island. Staten Island. I guess this is it. And this is it. You mean we got a part? Is that is that? This was so good. Well, I can come out and stay in Ireland. <laughs> you want to come over the house? Yeah, and we'll just, I'll just go. keep flipping your tape all flipping night, and then we'll eat pancakes, and oh, we'll keep talking about nothing. You, you like banana? Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, but then I'll gain all my weight back. Okay, <laughs> okay did you, did you, you really didn't, uh, the biggest yeah. concern you had was what, what are we going to talk about? How did it work out? Wow, on a scale of one to ten. According to how much fun I think I had, I have fun. I'd say this is a 10, there 11. Okay. I mean, I had a lot of fun. And you know what? It's so, what's what's great, great about you is it, it's so informal. And, you know, I thought I would have to, like, prepare something. or But no, you're like Mary. We're going to go to a McDonald's. Yeah. We're going to set up there. But we're not going to buy anything. We're just going to set up. Yeah. And we're just going to, you know, shoot the breeze. And that's exactly what we did. And that's I said. So don't sweat it. Everything's going to no, work No, it came out, out good. Thank okay. you. Well, well, that's up to the, the end. The, uh, not the viewer, the uh, listener. I was, I was going to say, I'm going to ask you the 30 questions, and that's it. You know, but I didn't want to put you in that position. Okay, once again, it's scared hyphen skinny.com yes mary domino uh, m-a-r-y-d-i-m-i-n-o.com thanks for the tape flip and thanks for, <laughs> thanks for a swell i look i've been looking forward to this for a while thanks for a, a wonderful performance thank you and a lot of fun and showing me the difference between punchlines and the art <laughs> Right? Okay, there you go. Well, Thank you, great. everyone. Thank you very much. You've been listening to uh, uh, um, uh, you've been listening to Visions, a uh, series of visits to almost everywhere. I'm your host and fellow traveler, Herb Mosman. Uh, these episodes that I'm doing here in New York City, I've dubbed New York City NYC Visions, and uh, you'll be hearing them uh, soon on AudioBookRadio.net. Folks, I love, I love doing these programs and having you uh, enjoy them. I hope. Yay! Uh, uh, thank you very much, and thank you again, Mary. Let's go eat a big, big Mac now and some fries. Come on. Thank you for listening, <laughs> folks. Bye-bye.